Welcome to another tutorial on MongoDB. Today we're specifically going to look at the aggregation framework. Let's have a quick introduction. The aggregation framework is a set of analytics tools within MongoDB that allows you to run various reports or analysis on one or more MongoDB collections. In MongoDB, the aggregation framework can be used in three modes, the aggregation pipeline, MapReduce, or single purpose aggregation operations. Today, we're only going to focus on the aggregation pipeline. Let's dive into a diagram and quickly explain. So the aggregation framework is based on the concept of a pipeline. So how does this work? The pipeline takes as input a single collection. It passes the collection through one or more stages. And in our case here, we've got three stages that the collection get passed through. In each stage, you can perform different operations in the pipeline. Each stage also takes as input whatever the stage before produced as output. The input and output for all stages are documents. At the end of the pipeline, what we get is the output of our transformed and aggregated data. So let's look at this in a bit more detail. So over here we can see as input what we get in is a collection. We've got three stages. So in our first stage, we have a stage operator called match. Our second stage, we have a stage operator called sort. And in our third stage, we have a stage operator called project. And what our output is going to be is our transform data. So what we get in is a collection and each of our documents is going to pass through these different stages. And then we're going to end up with our output. Let's look at a more complete example to get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So this is the same example as before in the previous slide, only with a bit more code. So here we've got db.companies.aggregate. So here we're specifying in the database we want to access the company's collection and we want to aggregate the data. Here is our, pipel here is our pipeline and stages of how we're going to aggregate the data. So let's look at our stages in a bit more detail here. So as the company documents come through, we're going to match founded year that is equal to 2011. So we're going to match all documents inside this collection where founded year equals 2011. That's the first stage. Then our second stage is going to take this aggregated results as input. So here's input. Data processing, output. Okay, so in our next stage, what we do is we sort by name in descending order. So founded year is being returned, that is greater than 2011, and name year is referring to a field inside a single document on the company's collection. So every document in the company's collection that have a names field we're going to sort by descending order. Then what we're going to do is, we're only going to project the name field. So here we've got ID colon zero. What we're doing here is we suppressing the ID field, meaning that we only want to display the name field and we don't want to display the ID field. Zero denoting that we do not want to show it and one denoting that we do want to show it. So over here, we've got three simple stages. We've got match, sort, and project. And as you can see in our output, what do we get? We only get the name field, which is correct. That's the only field we wanted to project it. And then we get the value. And these results only match the found year field that is greater than 2011. So I hope this gives you a brief idea as to how it works. We're going to dive into some more actual code on the CLI now to see this in action. Let's go for it. So over here, I've already imported the database. The description to do that is inside the description of the video. And I'm just going to run Mongo now. I'm going to go use tutorial, which is the name of the database that I've specified. And then I'm going to ran over this query in a bit more detail. We're going to break it down. We're first going to start off with match, where the field is found 
field found here is with a value of 2011. So to make a bit sense of this, let's first look at the, at the sample document. Just show you what the document looks like. There's, there's a lot of fields on here. Some of them are nested images, available sizes. This is a very, very huge document. So let's step through our aggregation query incrementally to make a bit more sense of it. So over here, what I'm doing now is I'm just copying the first query. And I'm incrementally going to run through it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go db.companies.aggregate. Aggregate is the syntax that we use to create our stuff and stages in. And what we have over here is what you call a stage operator. So all your stage operators is going to go inside here. So over here, the first stage operator is match. What we're going to do now is we're going to take in the collection companies and we're going to match all documents we found here equals 2011. I've added dot print here just so that our output is readable and not scrambled all over the place. Okay, there we go. That was a successful query. As we can see here, we get data back where the actual year is greater than, not greater than, it is equal to 2011. There we go. Equal to found year, 2011. I'll go look for another document. You see with this, it's very difficult to reason about your, your query because you are projecting all the fields. So let's just fix this immediately by only projecting the name field and suppressing the ID field. The reason why we suppress the ID field is because it is compulsory for us to either show it or hide it. What we're going to do is if you don't add ID zero there, MongoDB is just going to show it for you. So we copy that, we're going to paste it in here. And now when we get out, we can actually take pretty out now because we don't need that. Because the only fields that we're going to get back now is the name field. Let's have a look. There we go. So as you can see, our query ran successfully. Here's our pipeline. We're matching all documents that is equal to 2011. We're suppressing the ID field and we are displaying the name field. Just for completeness in this exercise, I'm going to show you what happens when we actually don't suppress the ID field. So let's just do this. As you can see here, MongoDB by default just shows it to you. So if you don't suppress it, it will just include it. So we're gonna go back and suppress it. We're gonna run our query. Okay, so here we've run db.companies.aggregate. Inside here, we've got our first stage, which is match, found year 2011. We project the ID field suppressed and the name field we must show. And over here, we can see that in this pipeline, we only have two stages. It's a match and it's a project. And then what we get back is our data nicely formatted the way we want it. Only the name field being projected. So this is still keeping things simple. What we're going to do now is we are going to sort the results by name in descending order. So the last result is now going to be our first result when we run it outside our query. So I'm just going to copy this over here. I'm going to paste it in. I'm going to paste it in my CLI. And then run enter. Okay. So here we've got db.companies.aggregate. And here we've got three stages. Match, sort, and project. And here you can see that what we've done is we've run first the match stage. We've matched documents that is to 11. And in the second stage, we immediately reorder our results in descending order. And then after that, we project the ID field suppressed and then the name field one. So this is very interesting here. After match, we run sort. And what sort takes as input is what match has produced as a result. And we saw that earlier. 
I mean, we just ran max, the results were um, in a random order. And when we ran sort, we can now take the results of match and start sorting it in descending order. So that's our first example of the aggregation pipeline. And now we're going to move on to the second example and also some theory. So here's common stage operators that you can use within the MongoDB aggregation framework. And these are the most common ones you will probably be using for your day-to-day -day, um, queries that you'll be doing. So you'll be using group, project, match, limit, skip, unwind, and sort. A very popular stage operator that we're going to cover now is called group. Let's dive into it. So group groups documents by field value or an expression. Compute the count of each distinct value. In our example, we are grouping by field value. Let's look at our specific example. So what we're going to take as input is our company's uh, collection. And over here, I've just minimized the document size. So all I'm showing is the name and the found year for our documents. All the other fields, I've, I've just hidden them away for completeness of the exercise. The file size is too, too, too big to, to show all the results. So these are just a minified version of our actual documents. Over here, so think of this as the group stage. Over here, we take our input, we have a data processor, and then we have our output. After our output, this can be passed on to the next stage in the pipeline. So what do we have here? First, we've got input. And over here, we have our collection. Then we have our data processor. This is where we will actually write our expression or the field we want to match. So what do we want to do? So we're using the group stage operator. What we're grouping is we're grouping underscore ID and we want underscore ID to be the value of founded year, founded underscore year. And then what we're doing is we're writing companies, which is a, a variable value that we create, and then we push name to it. So what's going to happen here is we're going to match founded year. We're going to we're going to match founded year on these input documents. So over here we can see we've got the first the first document has got the year 2010. The second document has got the year 2010. So these two we are going to group together by founded year. And then what we're going to do with them is every time we group it, we're going to take their name and we're going to push it onto the company's array. Over here, we've got our output that demonstrates that. So what do we get as output? We get the ID, which is 2010. And as we can see, our founded year is 2010. So that's correct. And then we get back this company's array, which we've defined. And every time an input document runs through our data processor. It pushes the result of, of the name field inside our document onto the actual array. This is a tricky concept to understand if you haven't dealt with it for the first time, but it's extremely powerful because it allows you to leverage all the other great power operators that you get with inside MongoDB, which we won't be covering today, but the one that you will mostly be working with is accumulators. But this is a simple example to explain to you how group works. Let's dive into the code to make a bit more sense of this. So here we've got our second query, db.companies.aggregate. The first stage in the pipeline, we use match on founded year that is greater than 2010. The second stage, we're grouping all of that results. We we're grouping them, we're grabbing the ID field, and then we're matching it against found year. What we do next is we create a variable called companies, and every time we match the found year, we push onto that array. And then lastly, we've got a sort. We're sorting by 
underscore id which would be the founded year in ascending order let's write this query to make a bit more sense of it okay there we've run our query now just going to add pretty there we go so i'm reading from bottom to top now and over here we can see that we've successfully defined underscore id as the founded year and we've created our companies array and we've pushed all the matching results onto this array and now we can see in 2013 all the companies that was found are these guys over here and if we go up 2012 all the companies that was that were found are these guys over here thank you I hope that gives you a better understanding of how the aggregation framework works in MongoDB. If you've got any more questions, please give me a shout and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you so much.